Welcome to the Mount Gill Missionary Baptist Church, number Apron and Drive, Conway, Arkansas, where the pastor is Reverend Forsey Cooper. These are your announcements. Thank you for joining us for our in-person and our virtual worship experience. You can catch us on YouTube and Facebook each Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Be blessed as we prepare for the worship experience on today.
to the throne of grace. And I want you to get somebody on your mind. This one that still has the activities of their mind and that still goes to their right mind, but they haven't walked in this country.
And if anybody is in chapter 28, you got a reason to shout, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. If you're here to help celebrate today and you can read chapter 28, verse 1, you ought to be shouting right now. Because just last week they were in a storm. Yes, sir. They were in a storm. I've been trying to wait to hear something to shout. I've been trying to wait to quiet the right note to shout. I've been trying to wait to check in to shout. You made it with an check, you ought to be shouting. If you made it with a short check, you ought to be shouting. Can I get it with you? God preserve every one of them from the God is to keep up his word. When purpose is attached to your journey, and when God has divinely drafted you for this son, God makes it his business to cover you and to keep you, and, and he makes it his business to pay the charge for you to reach your destiny. God honors the voice of this visionary missionary. If the hearers only connect to the story and of the life of the Apostle Paul, you miss the point. If you can only see this story in light of Apostle Paul, and you miss what God has done in your life. You miss the point. Yes, the, really, the, the, the story and the journey is really not about Paul in the first place. Right. Too many times we think it's about us. It, it, it was really about Paul being a container that carried the, the uh, ingredients called the gospel. Right. God uses this container called Paul to get the gospel from Jerusalem to Rome. Right. And many times we look and we think that we are the container, we are so important. Then it really doesn't matter what the container looks like if the stuff in it ain't no good. Right. And you're with us? Yeah. Have you ever pulled up to, to the, uh, the fast shoe place and you order your drink and you order one of those big 44 ounce drink. It was a hot day. And then when you got to a drink and you drove down the street and took a sip, it was just talking in the water. You had the same container that everybody else had. But the stuff in the container was the water. But Paul, Paul is a container. He contains the gospel message. And he contains the gospel message that he's carrying to the other world. This kingdom agenda that Paul was a part of is much larger than Paul. All right. It's much larger than the apostle. It's too defining to, uh, for too many people to just be in the hands of one Paul. But he's supposed to carry the gospel and run his leg up the race. <clears throat> God is up to something bigger and the pieces of your life puzzle are now coming together. Amen. Somebody don't know what he said. Right. What all the stuff you went through, yeah. all of those nights that you cried, all of those nights that you crowned for the chest, all of those nights that you prepared to be excellent on your job, it's coming to fruition right now. Yeah. Even though Paul had experienced ship playing the company, right. even though Paul had been through high priests and governors and Procurators and stood before the Sanhedrin councils, and, and Paul had to stand and preach on the Areopagus. Paul had to preach at Paul's heel. Yes. Paul had to preach in a Roman jail. Yes. All of that stuff is a part of the plan of God, and the puzzle is coming together. Yes, Anybody there can like put puzzles together? Yeah. Put puzzles together to relax your mind. Yeah. Yeah. Every now and then, you, you almost got it, but you got a few pieces. Uh, missing. Yeah. And then when you find the pieces that no longer missing, but you just keep trying to jam them in the wrong spot. Uh, you, you, you like that? Now, now I, do, I used to do a few puzzles, but I, I used to try to do mechanic work, Deacon Dawson. I was always trying to put a screw yeah. in the wrong spot. Uh, amen. Amen. Y'all know what I mean. You, and, and I have a problem. Uh, Brother Fletch, I was always trying to put screw in the wrong spot, and when I got through the project, I had extra screw. Yeah. Yeah. Because I didn't put them where they were supposed to. Yeah. God is using Paul to put some pieces of the puzzle together. Yeah. The experience of the apostle life and the journey are too many and too miraculous to call them all right now. 
But the many miraculous experiences of his journey allows us to see how God manifests his, himself in Paul's journey. And you ever saw God in the midst of what you were going through? You didn't see it until after you went through it. Can you get with me? You didn't see how God was in the midst of it all? The apostle's testimony is a reminder that God is always, everybody say always. God is always at work in our life. The psalmist said it this way, he that keep it is uh, neither slumbers nor sleep. So I don't care what you went through, what you are going through, what you are presently in. God is at work. Yeah. He's up to something in your life. Yeah. So, so first of all, you have a testimony that reminds you. That's what testimony does. It reminds us that God still he, he got you covered. Yeah. I don't care how it looks. God has you covered. You know who God has covered? Uh -huh. Because God has to keep you covered. Can you get with us? If you look back to the early parts of, of chapter 27, Paul said, I had a visitor tonight. Uh -huh. And the visitor told me there would be loss of all of the stuff on the ship, but there would be no loss of that. Uh -huh. 200 plus passengers start, 200 plus passengers stand on the ship. Yeah. God keeps his word. Yeah. Not only is it a reminder, but the apostle testimony is the revelation of God's grace. God's protection and God's power to provide. Doing God's will has benefits attached. Y'all right. wish um, you want to benefit plans, get in God's will. Right. I want to do something here. I, I, I knew I was going to get happy somewhere along the line. So I figured I need to give y'all points before I get happy. Amen. Just, because, just in case it get happy, you can't say he got happy and didn't preach. Point number one is the arrival to shore was complete safety. Uh, yeah. that, that's that's right. Point number one, the arrival to shore was complete safety. That's verse number one. <laughs> Point number two is the attitude of kindness. Uh, verse number two. Okay. Point number three is the actions of the apostle. All right. Point number four, the assessment of people. Uh -huh. Point number five, the assignment to minister in strange places. Y'all get them? So let's get on. First of all, verse 1 says they arrived in a place called Melita or Malta. Yeah. In its, in its barbarous countries. It, it is considered that Malta was a place, the name Malta means place of refuge. If you've been in a shipwreck situation, you need to find a safe place. You need to find the same thing. That's what the church is for people that have been in a shipwreck life. We ought to be a city of refuge. We ought to be a place where anybody can come and feel safe. I don't care what their conditions are. They ought to be able to come to the house of God and feel like they are in a place of refuge. Now it says something here in verse 1 and 2. The martyr place of refuge. Barbarous people. That does not mean a barbarian mean people. Its original language gives the connotation of the word barbarous or barbarian that means uh, that, that means a uh, a people that speaks an unfamiliar language. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. Unfamiliar. That everybody don't talk like us. Holla, thank you, bless the Lord. Good morning. I mean, I had this one friend, one friend, he would always, young fella, young fella, I was trying to keep him close to the church. And he, he told one of the real people, he gets, he gets. I'm familiar with language, right? I was saying, well, what's your name, Pete? He said, look. I, I caught on that one. A few minutes later, he was talking about something. He said, uh, uh, I read, read, I got me a square. What's a, what's a square? <laughs> 40 hours a week, Reverend, I ain't got to look on my back of the pole. <laughs> Unfamiliar. What am I trying to get you to see? The people that we are going to get that are shipwrecked from the world that will come into the modern day church, they don't speak the same language. Can I get with this? Now, now, now you got to deal with them in your family reunion. Or you got your nieces and your nephews and your cousins and everybody else. They don't talk like church. Anybody got folks like that in there? You're going to deal with some of them just 
next Sunday evening. Yeah. They're going to come down and pick up a plate. Yeah. They're going to smell like weed. We're living first and last lives after we 
we have been through shipwreck situations. Can I get a witness? Paul and the 270 plus uh, passengers on the ship get off the ship on the shore and some barbarians made them a fight. Now, if you read from the American language, when we hear the word barbarian, we think of unlearned, uncouth. But these folks were kind. See what they said? And the barbarian people showed us no little kind. In other words, they didn't just say, how y'all doing? They, come on in. What do you need? Can I help you? Sit down. Let me make a fire. Your cold be see All of the shipwreck that you've been through. Let me help you to become. The attitude of kindness reveals by the people. They spoke in different languages. I hollered when I saw the deacon doors. They spoke, a, they spoke a different language. Yeah. But the kindness could be felt in any language. God is so aware of the past storm that he positions the right people on the show yeah. to assist you and to minister to you and uh -huh. That is just like God when his children, you and me, when we experience shipwreck. God will allow you to meet the right people All right. to provide comfort. Now, I, I had a thought last night, I didn't write it down, but it comes back, so let me give it to you while I'm thinking. If you are in the right position to either serve uh -huh. or be served, uh -huh. if you are not part of the shipwreck situation, you ought to be the one serving. Uh -huh. Y'all miss it, y'all miss it. See, see. Those folks on the shore at this particular point, they were serving the ship. Wow. Yeah. So too many times we think because we, we, we're not yeah. in the ship. Oh. Oh. We don't have to do that. Oh. Church, church is full of needs, but we need some hands right. to serve in ministry. Amen. Right. They provide things necessary to bring comfort and rejuvenation. Wow. Kindling sticks for fire and life. Yeah. They provide comfort, they show compassion and concern. And when you do those three things, they can go a long way in your life. Yes, right. After storm, whenever you have experienced some hard times in your life, you have a photographic memory of who showed up when you were going through. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's the folk that you don't forget. Yes, sir. Don't be right. Because they showed up when you were struggling. Yeah. They showed up when you were crying at night. They showed up when everybody else went on. Right. Listen. Let me say this. You don't have to be just openly in a shipwreck situation. Some of your shipwreck situations we can't see. So some, some of you are going through some shipwreck situations in your mind. In your spirit, in your inner being. And that's why you have to be kind to everybody. Because what you see on the outside may not be indicative of what's going on on the inside. And your kind word can say so much to someone that's struggling on the inside. We made it to where everything we want to done openly in front of people, in front of the crowd. But sometimes God wants to minister through you to others that won't show their feelings yeah. to the world. Amen? Yeah. So some of you are going through the situation. Y'all don't want everybody to know that's why you won't come to the altar. Yeah. You know why? Because people, if they don't have information, they have speculation and imagination. Yeah. And so they see you coming to the altar, they, they, they think, well, what's going on in that life? If you ever been in a storm, if your boat of life has been rocked and reeled, then you know what it means to be some kind of people. I think our, I think our pastor, I think our, that's some folks that been ride or die. I think our, that's some folks that been ride or die, even when, ooh, I was right. See, it's, it's one thing to be riding out of the neighborhood. But they are being ride and die when I'm there. Yeah. Right. So every now and then you need to 
and I don't care who you are, how smart you are, how intelligent you are, how old you are, yeah. what position you have, you don't always make the right decisions. I ain't gonna say that I'm just gonna hold up my hand. I'm guilty. Yeah. I ain't gonna say that I'm just gonna hold up my hand. I'm waiting for somebody to stick up their hand. Some of you smart folks, stick up your hand. How smart you were, but you made some bad decisions. How, how smart you were, but you went the wrong way. How smart you were, but you, you, you said the wrong thing. All of us need some kind hearted folk on the show. Yeah. After we have shipwrecked our situation. Yeah. Yeah. Now, kind hearted. The attitude. The attitude of the apostle. Paul, oh, see, he teaches us something here. Verse 3. And when Paul had gathered upon those streets, uh, y'all see Paul, the apostle, sir? Yeah. Paul, the mighty prognosticator, preacher, poet, Paul, sir? Yeah. Y'all see that? Yeah. So, see, many times, I said this to a friend of mine, you got to be careful of people that are looking for an audience. All right, wow. And instead of an assignment. Uh, uh, Some folks won't serve until you look. Right, right, right. Because they're looking for an art. So some folks ain't got nothing to say until you look. But when you're a real servant, and when it's cold on the shore, you will grab some stick just like everybody else. That's the Paul. Paul is not a boat servant. Uh, I remember the time I was in my first church and I saw some things going back to church and so I was I probably shouldn't say this y'all so school's going on I don't know how to run back in there <laughs> <laughs> I was back in church and the boss came so I, I just grabbed the back of him so I started the back of him and I'm in the pews and stuff and I saw what he had nothing wrong wasn't mad at anybody my job is just to serve whatever it needs to be served. Amen? Yeah. So I'm down under there. I'm, I'm, I'm getting food. So it's good. You didn't hear it. You didn't hear And so some of the mothers come in and they saw me. I'm in the, I, they had to holler because I'm down on the pew. I'm, I'm, I'm getting with it. Go do it. Go do it. Go do it. And they said, Pastor, what are you doing? I said, I'm just running back. Well, you don't need to be doing that. No, it doesn't need to be done. Yeah, right. Amen? Yeah. When you are a real servant, you don't need a title. Paul, gather speech. This moment of ministry will identify Paul, personify Paul, yeah. and magnify Paul as an anointed ambassador for God. Yes, sir. Why? Making the fire, getting sticks for the fire, putting sticks on the fire. Everybody ought to bring their own fire. Everybody got something on it. Come, come on. Our praise team, we got one of the best teams in the praise team this side of the glory. And some of y'all said that like, ah. y'all put your stick on the fire. Yes, y'all get back with your stick on the fire. Yes, oh, Make the fire. Oh, boy, I don't think you're going to and while he's gathering sticks, a stink uh, yeah. of fire. Uh -huh. yeah. I got to think, you need to keep the fire. Uh -huh. yeah. Because fire will expose the stuff. Yeah. Uh -huh. Can I get with me? Fire will purify some stuff. Yeah. You, you ever had a, a spinner in your hand? Yeah. You ever have a in your hand and, and, and one of those old mothers, or your mama, or your granddad, or young, would go and get a needle? Yeah. And before they would stick that needle in your hand, they'd take the needle over to the stove and put it on the fire. You, you worry about the heat on the, on, on the needle, but they're worrying about the germs that would be exposed. So fire will purify some That's why every church needs some fire in the church. You need some hot folk in the church. You need some prayer warriors in the church. You need some fire because fire will purify some stuff. Ah, I'm going to go It just brought out an open. Snake. Listen, thank you, 
Holy Ghost. Thank God when you pray, the pastor always got some time. Y'all need to pray, the pastor doesn't, he, that the pastor never stand without some fire. Because the pastor needs to be able to expose and eliminate some stuff. A fire presence uh, in your church right. because that's some folk that will creep into your church. Ooh. And if you don't have some fire, uh, they will they will bring some uh, unclean stuff. Yeah. Uh, fire in the leaves. Fire shows. The fire elevate, elevates God's power yeah. and pushes. God's his purpose. Now, when you see the actions of Paul, the attitudes of kindness and the arrival, then you got to see the assessment of the people. Uh -huh. Verse 4, right there. And when the barbarians saw that the venomous speech hang on, on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he had escaped to see, yet business suck in the night. Uh -huh. Verse number 6. How bad they looked when he should have stormed or fallen down and dead. This sudden, but after they had looked a great while and saw no harm, come to him, and they changed their mind and said he was a God. I just, I don't know how to say this, I like Don't be swayed by public opinion. Y'all see how quick the opinion is going to change. He, 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 he's a murderer, and next man he's a god. Oh, right. While gathering sticks, fire, burning a snake, latched on to the apostle's hand. Right. I would basically I'll give us two inconsistent viewpoints. But the been glued and must be murdered. A hard journey. Remember that Paul is a prisoner, most likely guarded by Roman soldiers. Yeah. So when they see him guarded by Roman soldiers, wherever he go, Roman soldiers go. They know he's a criminal already. So they suggest that he must be a bad man. Oh, that he must be a criminal. And so all of a sudden, they identify him as a criminal. But they still get watching. They're watching. They're watching. Right. Oh. Keep watching. Yeah. Oh. And they say, well, he should have shown up by now. Because if you are on an island that's about 18 miles wide and about 8 miles long, and they they don't know what type of venomous snakes are on the island. Right. They say he didn't swim up. He didn't get a fever. He didn't fall out of the mud. My, he must be a god. Listen, I made a point so I can say, know who you are. Don't let folk put stuff on you that don't attach to you. You said what you want to, but that ain't my name. Amen? Amen. Apostle Paul participates in the ministry of serving others no matter what people say. Apostle Paul displays pause no matter what other people think. Apostle Paul is preserved for a purpose, and when you know who you are, it doesn't matter what others think. When you know who you are, it doesn't matter what other folks say. When you know who you are, it doesn't matter what other folks see. When you know that you've been called by God to fulfill a desired purpose, it doesn't matter what folks say about you. He said, I don't care what the opinion of me is. It doesn't matter what the opinion of people is. But I've been called by God. Verse number seven, in the same quarters were possessions of chief men of the island whose name was Publius, who received us and lied with us three days. Yeah. And then it came to pass that the father of Publius lost sick of a fever and blood is yeah. to whom Paul entered and prayed that they his hand on him and healed him. Every now and then, in the middle of your service, God will allow somebody to show up that need you to put your hand on him. Yeah. Am I going to witness? Yeah. Yeah, you ought to keep the fire burning because you're going to run into some situations. What you need to fire to show up. When you need a fire believer to show up. When you need a fire believer to put it out there on you. And I can witness every now and then you need somebody with some fire to sing. Glory, hallelujah. Every now and then you need somebody with fire to stir in the name of Jesus. Every now and then you need somebody with fire.
felt fire exposed it. We felt fire purified and fire refined. You take a piece of precious metal and you put it in the fire. On one hand, it falls out all of the appearance. On the other hand, it makes the metal shine like you metal. Can I get a witness? Every now and then, you need some God in your life because God will bring some fire to shine. Yeah. 
not too big, to God's face. But if you put it on the mic on Mark's ear, I see it on the telescope. Do you hear me? Jesus was born on Christmas on a very early night. 
and then the sky above him shone very bright as light. All the heavenly angels sang some the priest's name. They told the little shepherds, so they left their sheep and came. From the east, the wise men roamed, bringing precious gifts to share. Riches for the king of kings, to show the Savior that they cared. Now we celebrate his birthday, and our hearts and every day. Jesus and the humble manger, we truly love this here today. with the sheep, herds, and the sheep. To, to visit, to behold, to glory, to believe. The Savior is born for the nation and for me. But what gift might I bring? Is there anything of value I have that you might need? I hear a little drummer boy drum, drum, drum. His beat. Mary sings a lullaby, and the baby goes to sleep. Is there something I can give? He might want to keep. This is all I have, my life, my words, my poetry. Invited to the nation with the sheep, shepherds and the sheep. To adore, to abide, to behold, to believe. Invited as a welcome guest to visit the King of Kings. A time to celebrate of the birth of a baby boy. A child innocent and true. A child sent as a gift to save me and you. This wondrous story has reached all corners of this home. A king is born but one who doesn't wear a robe. He will grow to teach and love. He will spread the word of his father above. His gentle ways and his touch will turn water to wine. This newer child is a wondrous and divine. His words will be placed in a book for all to read. His words will help him, all those who are in need. This, gift, this is a gift, no price to ever be given. And even after death, he, he will be with you. His cry can be heard by all the things. sight of the true meaning of Christmas and one special man. When we go shopping, we say, how much will it cost? Then the true meaning of Christmas somehow becomes lost. And amidst the tinsel, glitter, and ribbons of gold, we forget about the child born upon the night so cold. The children look for Santa in his big red sleigh, never thinking of the child whose bed was made of hay. In reality, when we look into the sky, we don't see a sleigh, but a star burning bright and high. A faithful reminder of that night so long ago and of the child we call Jesus whose love the world would know. Christmas time is finally here. It only comes once a year. And and it's time to spread good cheer to those who love and hold dear. Christmas time is a time of glee, a time when peace and love run free, a time for those like you and me to sit beneath the Christmas tree. Christmas time is a time of joy and a time of, to sit back and enjoy the smile on each girl and boy as they play with the Christmas story. Christmas time is a time to share the passing of another year birth of Jesus, a joyful prayer to show loved ones how much we care. Christmas time is a time for a song, a time for us to get along, a time 
Like to make us feel the Lord Jesus strong, forgive all those who did us wrong. Christmas time is a time to pray, put love and kindness on display to show compassion along the way. Christmas time should be every day. Once in a manger, my friend Gilmore. Once in a manger a long time ago, before there was Santa and reindeer snow, a star shone down on humble beginnings below of a baby just born who the world was soon enough. Never before had there been such a sight, with the son of the king have to suffer this plight. Are there no armies to lead? Are there no battles to fight? Shouldn't he conquer the world and demand his birthright? No. This fair little infant in sleep beside the hay would change the whole world with the words he would say. Not about power or demand can wait, but mercy and loving in her giving God's way. For all means and humbleness with the battle be won, as shown by the action of God's only true son, who gave up his life for the sins of everyone, who saved the whole world when his journey was done. Many years have now passed since that night long ago, and now we have Santa and rain and snow. But down in our hearts, which you mean you know, it is the birth of that child that makes Christmas so. Just one week before Christmas, once prayers had been heard, the people were stirring to get out God's word. The hymns were being sung to Holy God above, and thanks for him sending Jesus Christ and his love. Christmas brings remembrance of family and friends and the importance of our sharing our love without end. Our blessings are too numerous, our hearts filled with joy, yet our eyes have often drifted away from our Lord. The Christmas season brings forth the best of most souls to help those less fortunate and lighten the world. Salvation was offered for all to receive if only each person would listen, heed, and believe. So if you don't know him, deep down in your heart, ask him to save you now. You'll be changed on the spot. It's still about Jesus, the bottom of As the joy of giving is in the air, also many blessings with much despair, with food beyond measure in which we shall feast, the rejoicing of precious life makes it all complete. Giving thanks through prayer is a timely pleasure, for the birth of our Savior is the greatest treasure. For the hope, for with hope and grace in which we are so faithfully bound, for it is the love of our Lord God in which we which we were found, brings to my remembrance of how Christ began. A king was born to save the soul of all men. Let's give our kings one more thing. singing, some of us tend to get calm. Some places you do not fall asleep is in the church, in the court, or behind the wheel. Let us drive through the story of Jesus as we celebrate this time in the life of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, has been born. Right. Mary and Joseph traveled to Bethlehem because the Roman Emperor 
all the senses of everyone in their hometown. Yes. Mary was pregnant and she was running out of time. They went from place to place, end to end. And everyone did not have room for them. They had to find a place to have the baby. Mm -hmm. They knew that there was no more time. Mm -hmm. When you look at the book of Acts, Eutychus was there, but he was asleep. Mm -hmm. Mary and Joseph, they were there. They ended up having Jesus in a sleep. Because they ran out of time. Mm -hmm. Place, They placed him in a manger. Something that animals eat at. They ran out of time. All of Eutychus. Before you talk about him going to sleep in the church, I, I wrote a few points here I want to make. First of all, give him credit for showing up. Is that fair? At least he did show up. At least he was present. Amen. And because if you do the history in the background, Eutychus and the folk that Paul were teaching to, he's preaching too long. I'm tired, Eutychus says. I'm tired and he's preaching. I'm going to sit in this window. Whatever the subject matter is, Paul holds their attention and he preaches too long. He was present. He, he, he was positioned to where he could hear. Now watch this. They didn't have microphones. They didn't have, so everybody else was silent.
Can anybody hear me? have time. Missed what? People have time for everything else. They have time to go to school. They have time to go to work. They have time to go Christmas shopping. But they don't have time to spend with God. Come over here. I want you to sing this.
Girl, where's your mama? I've been waiting here for hours to do her hair. I don't know. I haven't seen anybody. Well, come right here so I can do yours. What's going on? Where is everyone? Joy to the world. The Lord has come. Pastor Cooper, Deacon Mavia. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons? And daughters, did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? And this child that you delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby? Your baby boy would calm the storm with his hand. Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels try? And when you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God. Sleeping child you're holding 
is the great I am. I'm looking for past pickets. Past pickets. Uh, you pass from the pool. Thank you. 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 Thank Amen. 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 We want to thank everyone that helped. Um, thank Sister Tiffany, uh, all the cast. We want to thank our youth for coming out with their speeches. I was driving fast, but I missed the speeches. Did they do a good job? Good, good, good. And we want to thank our pastor for allowing us the opportunity to be creative. Uh, thank all the guys for showing up and supporting us too. Amen? Amen. All right. Amen. That's all I have. <laughs>